Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. We've got a special episode, as you can tell, Easter. Yeah. So, I'm sitting there thinking about this about a week or so ago. I was coming home from work late night, and uh, I had to go buy some stuff at, at the local Walmart. Love it, because it's open 24 hours. And um, so, two in the morning shopping is awesome. Nobody's there. Anyway, um... So um, I'm buying some stuff, and I walk by, and what I see, the Easter setup. And I'm like, well, I didn't really buy any Easter wine. I wasn't necessarily planning on doing an Easter episode. and um, But I said, you know what? I'm going to do some wine. <laughs> I'm going to do an episode with all the candy. Not the food, but the candy. And then after that, I started thinking about, well, this Passover and all that. So um, I'm not doing anything that says, that says Passover or kosher, though um, I do have a wine later in another episode that's not kosher, but it is uh, from a Jewish winemaker. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> I decided I was going to go with wines that I'm going to say, you know what, it's time to have a little candy, have a little fun. So kind of went back to my childhood about some of the candy that I remember buying or eating, and also bought some other candy that I was just like, hey, let's just buy it. So um, we're going to go into three wines that I assume will pair well with the candy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the wines first. We're not going to do wine pairings with the candy. I'm going to go each wine individually. Then we're going to pair it with the candy that I think is going to pair with the best. Um, so I did buy these wines specifically for um, certain candies that are in the basket or in the eggs, or as you can see, I over you know overflowing and all that. So um, there's there's in my mind three types of candy that are in here, and I went with three different wines. All right, so, and then first off, let's not hit the microphone. First off, any apologies to the uh, to the winemakers um, uh, as far as like don't don't feel like don't feel disrespected or dissed. I'm pairing it with candy or Easter candy. Um, I think all these wines just on on the surface are probably gonna be just good wines on their own, but I'm having a little fun. All right, so, and I don't know if I'll do this every year if I do. I'll do an Easter special of sorts because really, honestly, I, I bought the candy and I started going, well, I should buy wine that pairs with lamb and ham. I was like, you know what? I bought the candy. I'm not going to try to, that, that'd be like five different wines. I'm only going to do three. This is going to be a long episode, by the way, probably 30 minutes, my, my guess. Um, let's see. What else I want to talk about, uh, about the Easter candy. I forgot to start the timer, by the way. It's all right. Start just so I can have an idea how long the episode goes. Um, yeah, I don't have a countdown like I usually do, which is a seven-minute countdown. That way, I know at seven, I've hit seven minutes, and I have to wrap things up. Or maybe, or sometimes, as you've seen, I pretty much ignore it and just keep going. Uh, this is I'm just counting up just to kind of get an idea how long I went. All right, so um, I think I'm just gonna go right into the wine. I thought there was something else I want to talk about, but maybe not. I'll probably think about it in a little bit. So let's start off with. Um, I didn't even put my little labels on the back because I bought the wine yesterday. That would be Tuesday. No, Wednesday. I'm sorry. Bought it Wednesday. Wednesday was errand day. Got a nice haircut. Got all that trimmed. Beautiful. All right. So, um, right. First off, this is the two. Oh, I think this was actually no 2011. So pretty spanking brand new. 2011. It's the vintage on the front. Uh, Risada. Moscato d'Asti uh, from Italy, and um, I say DOCG white wine, um, heavy bottle. Now this is a obviously a white wine. It's sparkly in the sense that it's it's not a. These things are they're more like a, a frizzante, so lightly sparkling. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see a little bit a little bit of froth on there. I mean, yeah, I'm using a regular wine glass, not a 
champagne champagne glass. Um, but uh, so I've got the uh, I've got that. Um, Moscato, first of all, is like the rage past year or so. Everybody's got to have Moscato. Um, I've done a Moscato Dosti before. That means it's more of the Frizzante style rather than just a sweet wine. Uh, so it's going to have a bit of sweetness. I wanted something that was kind of sparkling and sweet um, to go with one of the items in the basket. Um, I, I could have gone with a sweeter champagne, you know, actual champagne or a sweeter sparkling wine. But my, my actual thought was Prosecco or, or this. And since Moscato is the hot topic in wine, uh, I went with the Moscato. So yeah, not bandwagon, but something that, that makes a little more sense. All right, so um, it's um, from the Asti region. So that is the, that's why it's, you know, Moscato from Asti, Dosti. Um, uh, is in the Piedmont area. Piedmont is uh, in the northwestern corner of Italy. So the very top of the boot in the north well, your perspective, northwestern part of the country. Um, so a little bit north and west of uh, Tuscany, and that's closer, a little bit farther down. Not quite central Italy, but kind of in between central Italy and where Piedmont is, or Piemonte. So um, anyway, so uh, I bought this at World Market for 12, I'm sorry, well, it's regularly priced $14.99. Uh, I'm part of the World Explorer, World Market Explorer program, so Two bucks off, so it was twelve ninety nine, but regularly fourteen ninety nine. I was I wanted to try to hit ten dollars on these wines. Um, only one of them was actually none of them were ten dollars. I thought one of them was, but maybe not. So that, so um, anyway, so twelve ninety nine. All right. All right. So you've got uh, you've got the it's a fruit forward wine. So if you it's, it's kind of fruity. It you know almost smells fizzy you know um, it tickles the nose a little bit but I'm getting kind of that um, I'm gonna say gra grapefruit citrus type of, of flavor a little you know you can smell the sweetness so yeah I think they actually on here do they say anything about grapefruit no they well, they said stone fruit tangerines and honey I don't know. Maybe the tangerines. I don't get honey. I don't see stone fruit in it, but I can see the tangerine. Um, like it was almost grapefruity, like ruby red grapefruits, you know, Texas style. Anyway, you know, so because they kind of have a little bit of sweetness to it, they're not as tart, sour. First thing you get, it's sweet, but not sickly sweet. Um, the frizzante, you get a little bit of it, but it's not like a it's not like a sparkling wine, a champagne that you really feel the uh, the the bubbles in it. But um, I get that sweetness um, instead of like the the tangerine or or grapefruit. It's I get more of an apricot type of thing. Uh, they mentioned figs. I can kind of see that figs, dates. So you get that kind of sweetness. I don't know what else they mentioned. Um, oh, I said pears with that. But see, I get that type of flavors. Um, yeah, I don't really get flavor. I, I guess like maybe the honey on the on the palate, but it's not like a, a very it's not like a very very um, uh, prominent flavor. But I, I really feel like it's it's apricotty. Um, date like so more definitely fruit forward um, moderate acid medium to you know medium acid um, you don't like I say you don't really get the the bubbles so much on the palate um, yeah I'd say medium acid medium because because it got that salivation going on um, very tasty and and you know dude it's it's hard to like it's hard not to get be to be seduced by by the sugar level and by the sweetness um, as far as scoring, because you you know, I'm not going to give this a 70 for, for sure, but it's not a 100 point wine. But let's kind of think about the structure of it. How well is it made? I mean, yeah, it's sweet. So it's tasty. So the taste level is really high. I mean, it's it's a 10 on the taste level. It's tasty. But how is the balance on it? I mean, I think the acid is pretty good. 
Um, the flavors are still are still kind of in my mouth. I mean, they're they're pretty much gone by this point. But the finish is long enough that uh, that I can still taste a little bit. It feels like there's some body to it, some weight to it. Um, it's not a light wine. It feels like it coats my mouth. That kind of may be the, the, the honey aspect of it. Um, it it's, it's very, it's very fruit-driven. So it's, it's, I want to say one-dimensional, but it's, it's very focused in, in the type of flavors it gives. And this is a kind of wine that that's what it's supposed to do. This isn't supposed to be some complex white wine that's going to have all these subtleties of minerality and fruit um, and floral. I mean, there's a little bit of floral to it, but it's not. It's not supposed to be some some master, you know, uh, wine that's just subtle and all that. I mean, this is a wine that's just like, dude, I'm I'm a Moscato. I've got a little bit of fizz to me. I'm gonna be sweet. I'm from Italy, and I'm in a cool blue bottle. I'm a badass, and you know what? It's tasty. I think it's good. It's twelve ninety nine, fourteen, you know, fifteen bucks normally. You know, I think it's a little high, but um, you know, at thirteen dollars, it's it's you know only two dollars difference. But you know, we start getting that psychological, getting to fifteen dollars, like wow, man, it really better be a damn good bottle of wine. If it's thirteen, you're like, well, it's all right, you know, it's okay, it doesn't have to be super super great. If I'm going to score it, I'd give it a solid ninety. Um, a lot of that is the sugar aspect of it. Um, you know, if this, was, if this was some sweet red wine, you know I don't like sweet red, but whites that are sweet or, or reds that have a, a sugar, have it like have a sweetness to them from fruit, that's different. But, you know, those, those red wines that taste like, you know, I'm drinking grape juice or grape, you know, grape juice or drinking uh, uh, grape jelly. I'm not a fan of those. But uh, I give it a solid 90. Good start. Boing! Don't break the glass. All right, so... Make a little room so I don't spill anything. All right, so the next wine we're going to do, um, I was a little hesitant to buy it only because it was a Texas wine. And no diss in the Texas wineries, but it wasn't, it wasn't what I was looking for. Okay? I was looking for, I was looking for something with, with, with a little bit of sweetness, but not like residual, like a, like a fruit, a fruitiness, but not sweet. But also some, some good acid, that's going to stand up again to something else that's in the basket. So I, I read this, and I was like, well, I think this might be a decent little combination. So let's go right into what this is. Uh, and I've been kind of wanting to try this winery. So this is the 2010 Brennan Vineyards Austin Street. Three White Chicks um, is what it's called. Uh, the Brennan Winery is in a place called Comanche, Texas. And... You know, I don't really remember off the top of my head where Comanche is. Oh, I've already reached the limit on that, so we're going to do this. Boom. No, can't do that. Where is this? Go away. Boom. Boom. Um, I remember right, it's uh, northwest of uh, Austin. I mean, they, they put down where it was. No, don't do that. Uh, I mean, they put down where it was on their website, but I just didn't remember... exactly where it was boom there we go thank you google maps so i uh, bought this for 12.99 at world market uh it has um it has uh three as you know you kind of think of with three white chicks um has three uh three different varietals white varietals so um kind of zooming out on the map yeah, it's it, well, it's definitely well northwest of Austin. Um, it's actually kind of more even closer to Waco and Temple, but um, definitely northwest west, close to Abilene. It's kind of you know in between Abilene, Dallas, Austin. It's kind of like triangled or, or whatever, triangulate those three, kind of in the center of that little triangle. All right, so wines. It's got uh, 42 percent Muscat. 37% Semillon, and 21% Viognier. And I saw, I sat there and thought, this might be kind of a cool wine uh, to go with. And it says, uh, wine credit Dennis Markin said the wine was like a breath of fresh air, has a great balance of 
Acidity with a hint of sweetness, and that's what sold me. Acidity with sweetness, and that's what I needed. Um, make perfect wine for our hot, as in all caps, hot Texas summer days. Boom. And it pairs well with poultry. So I've already poured it. Boom, boom, boom. $12.99 world market. So let's see how this wine, just on its own, is. And I've been wanting to try the Brandon Vineyards on Twitter. We've, we've chatted, so hope I like it. And I've got to make a visit out there sometime. That's going to be a, that's going to be one of those. I got to take like a three day weekend thing. I already like in the nose. It's the, the, the type of nose that you get with Viognier and you know with the Semillon. The other day I was trying to work on my blind tasting skills. Dude, did I really? I had two Semillon based wines and I completely messed them up. All right, so. More floral than uh, fruit. Now I get maybe kind of like a peach. Color the label may have influenced that a little bit. It makes me think of Texas peaches. I know Georgia peaches are great. Sorry. So yeah, kind of more of a floral thing. I... <sighs> I'm bad with florals, I'm thinking white flowers type of stuff. Um, and then maybe a little bit of peach. And maybe, I don't know, maybe some honey. Maybe I'm getting that from thinking about the Moscato, but it feels like that that little bit of a uh, little bit of honey type of stuff. I see how it tastes. All right, so definitely some acid, um, medium high acid, not, maybe a little almost on the high side of the acid. Uh, mouth is watering a lot. Um, and this is really going to go well with, I think it's going to go well with one of the things in the, in the basket. Um, so uh, that's one of the first things that hit me. Um, more, I, I still get that little bit of honey, honey aspect. Um, really like it. Then I've also got, I um, just want to see what's going on over here. I don't know, squirrel! <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, got a little bit of that honey going on. And then, um, uh, whatchamacallit, kind of more of that, that peach apricot thing. It's more tart than sweet to me. Um, I think what happens if I do something sweet with it, it'll really, it'll be a nice counterbalance. As far as a wine, how well it's made, balance, flavors, um, uh, I, I would I would probably score it an 88. Um, I think it's well made. Uh, I'm not sure if, if the acid is a little more than I think to my liking for it for the wine, but um, I think I think with the food, see that's the thing is I'm pairing with candy, so that's not a good food pairing. But with, some, with the right food, with okay, here's here's what I'm thinking. Like I said, poultry. So you you, you pair with a chicken dish, not just grilled chicken, but you need to get a little bit of chicken with some cheese on it, um, maybe a little bit of uh, spice to it, um, that kind of thing. I think it will. I think it will pair really well with that. It's, it's a fairly dry wine. Like I said, maybe a tad a bit of sweetness, but I don't really get that much sweetness on it. Uh, breath of fresh air? I don't know. I think it's very enjoyable. Um, I might even give an extra point just because I think it's pretty cool. I think actually it's pretty good wine. So um, 90. I'm going back up to 90. I mean, if I give this a 90 just because it was sweet, I'm going to give that a 90. I really, I'm really liking the wine as I drink, as I'm tasting it more. I'm really starting to kind of like this this whole um, alternative white type of thing. You know, the I was finishing off the Torontes uh, last night. I'm really starting to gravitate towards that. Um, 
this Viognier. I've always kind of been a fan of Viognier. Even though it's the, the least amount in the wine, I feel like I'm tasting that more than the Muscat. Um, and the Semillon in there too. So I think I'd give that a 90 also. All right, moving on. Let's see how I'm, see how I'm doing on time here. All right, cool. Not too bad. All right, so this one. This is the, whoops, that's what I forgot to do. All right, so we're going to rinse first. All right, and I'll do that in just a second. This is the 2009 Avalon Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, also bought from World Market. This also was, six, this was $16.99 regularly, got it for $14.99. And hopefully you're figuring out where I, why I bought this. Now, and I specifically wanted a Napa cab, not just, I mean, they have a California cab that was like 10 bucks or eight or nine dollars, which is closer to the budget I wanted. But I really wanted Napa, and this is about the most reasonable Napa cab they had at Wolf Market. First thing I want to do, uh, meant to do it really with the first one, but we'll do it with this one. Um, about a week or so ago, or last week sometime, uh, a good family friend of ours passed away, so I just wanted to do a little, little pour. I'm not going to do the whole thing on the table because I don't want to get the table all messed up, but a little, uh, little tribute uh, to Ron. Uh, his son was my college roommate, so I um, just wanted to do that. Anyway, okay. So, moving on. Um, Avalon, Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, so this is in Napa Valley. Uh, or it's from Napa Valley. Um, wanted to get back to the website real quick here. Um, <clears throat> come on, Avalon. Now, they have, their website isn't really the best right now. I mean, the good part is it's got the geek stuff on it, but it doesn't really have the marketing stuff on it. And it's got the press, you know, your, your press release stuff and their, your tasting notes. So that's good, but as far as like a website, there still looks like they're working on I me. Mean, it says, you know, coming soon. So um, anyway, I wanted to quickly go through this real quick. Um, all right, so it is 76 Cabernet Sauvignon, 24% Merlot. Um, so it it's, meets the bare minimum to be called a, well, not bare minimum, it meets the minimum to be called a cab, which is fine with me. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I just want to know what's in it, just to give a, you know, a good idea. Um, it's from 2009. Uh, let's see. I want to see if there was anything about the winemaking. Here we go. 16 months aged for 16 months in French and American oak. And uh, harvested mid to late September. Let's see if there was anything else in here I want to talk about. Nope. All right. Let's check it out. So I'm getting lots of dark fruit. Um... I mean, I think I'm thinking like blackberries, like blackberries, raspberries. Maybe a little bit of smoke. A hint of it, you know, a little bit, not not a lot. Elements of smoke. I can kind of smell some wood in there. Oh, do I get any type of leather or or tobacco? Not really. Maybe a hint of leather to it. <clears throat> trying to expand my my not my 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 nose, my palate to leather and tobacco because I seem to not get those things, or I seem to not notice them because I'm noticing other stuff and trying to. But I know that these things are in there. But yeah, you know, smell like some wood type of stuff too. Wow, lots of good stuff going on here. Um, let's kind of pick the first thing. The first thing that hit me was the flavors. Um, got that, um, more that, that fruit forward, the black, the black berries, the raspberries, 
um, got a little bit of the wood and then the tannins and then some acid um, and then a little bit of the alcohol. Um, so let's go back to tannins. Tannins, medium, I'd say medium tannins, medium, 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 medium high tannins. Um, not about medium, no, because it's, it's still, but it's still coating the, the, the mouth, coating the gums. Um, definitely fruit forward, so more fruits than anything else. Um, I'm not going to say I'm going to get really any leather or tobacco on it. A residual sweetness to it, or a slight sweetness to it. Definitely, I mean, it's, I think it's really nice. I think it's really, I think these are, all of these are me 90 point wines in my book. 90 point straight across the board. Actually, I might even give this 91. I think I like this the best of all three wines. Um, just to have that little bit of extra, just to me, just really kind of nice. Um, you're going to pair this with anything traditional, you know, any, any type of steak, um, anything with like a sauce. I mean, I can see, you know, we have, we have a, like a cognac sauce at work. I think this would go really well with that. Honestly, put on a steak, it'd be great. Um, put some nice cheeses, like blue cheese, um, cheddars, all that kind of stuff. So how you put it with a hamburger, you know, a nice grilled hamburger with, a uh, like, well, I mean, like last night or yesterday, I had at Max's Wine Dive with a had this nice, great hamburger with a with blue cheese and bacon on it. Absolutely awesome. So, um, really good. And what they say, I heard, I know they had blackberries, Lin, lingonberries. Don't know what that is. Cassis, yeah, I guess the cassis in there. Violets, maybe. I don't know. I don't. Really, I, I'm, I'm bad with getting these individual flowers. Uh, caramel, that, I did get the caramelized sugar. I was afraid of that. I was like, yeah, sugar. No, I was not sure. Yeah. I wouldn't say caramel, but I got a bit of that type of sugar. So, yeah. Really good. I like it. 91. All right, so now we need to go back to the candy. So now let's rinse, rinse with the Osti here, with the Moscato, Moscato. All right, so what did I want to pair with this? Candy I'm not was never really a huge fan of, but I think it's funny. I think they're cute. All right, so the reason I did this is marshmallow. Marshmallow and something that's slightly sparkling. Actually, champagne will probably go really great with marshmallows, um, but I also want something sweet. Um, had to get the yellow ones, because they had like pink ones or purple and blue. I went with the yellow ones, the classic Peeps. All right, and I also call people Peeps, but not necessarily referring to this. So let's check it out. I mean, it's a Peep. It's a cheap marshmallow. With some candy coating, yellow. I can eat like a few of these before I get sick. Right, let's check it out. Mmm. Dude, are you kidding me? Absolutely. Even I can smell it with the paper in my mouth. My mouth, not mouth, mouth. You can't really see it, but it kind of looks like a little galaxy in there with the bubbles. You else watching? No, that's right. You're missing out on some good stuff you don't watch live. Yeah, that's some good stuff with the peeps. All right. Yeah, I'm swallowing it. Yeah, I'm drinking it. All right. Next. The three white chicks. You thought, yeah, I bet you thought I was going to pair this with the peeps, didn't you? Nah. It might go well with the peeps. Now this I'm pairing with jelly beans. Actually, I'm going to get one of the eggs that I put stuff in. 
All right, so jelly beans. Now I got two types of jelly beans in there. I got I got sour ones and I got regular jelly beans. Now I was really disappointed that the Jelly Belly bag was the sour. I didn't have the Jelly Belly regular jelly beans. So jelly beans. I think these are the regular ones. So All right, these aren't these aren't sour. It's got a little sweetness to it. It's got all those fruit flavors. I think these are actually the Skittles. I think those are the brand I bought. I don't know. LS Jelly Beans. I don't know what LS is. Yeah, not so much with the regular ones. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking there's a good combination right here. It works. I got the sour apple in there. Wasn't the best combination. It's a great wine. But wasn't the best combination. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, there, there's too much conflict there. Not a good pairing. They really does go with the with chicken and, and all that. They go really great with the uh, Moscato, though. Yeah, Moscato goes well with it. All right, now, the cab. Now, this is the rest of the candy. So all the chocolate. So I got the chocolate bunny. I, I, yeah, I didn't get, like, the big, big chocolate bunny because... I'm going to be eating most of this, and I don't want to get sick. I'm going to be eating most of it probably today. I don't want to get sick with the, with the bunny rabbit. But um, So I bought, um, so I got like the little robin's eggs. I remember eating these. I remember loving these all the time. And then I got like, you know, the assorted candy stuff. You know, um, I don't know. There's like peanut butter in this. Where's the peanut butter one? There's a peanut butter. So I'm going to be eating this. I got like Lynn's. Lind something, Lind whatever type of candy, and then there was something else. What was the other one? Um, dang it, let me open another egg. There was in this one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got the uh, Ferro eggs. Anyway, so all this cool stuff. Let me just keep the Robin's eggs here. Try to move some of this other stuff out the way. I'm going to leave all the by the way, I'm not going to change the set. I'm just going to go right into the next wines. I'm going to eat some of the stuff. Okay, so let's go right into this. Actually, what I want to do is pair this with uh, the, the rabbit first. So, yeah, I, I didn't go, yeah, I went cheap. I didn't need the big, tall rabbit. You know, I just went with something that was easy. Solid rabbit. Okay. Solid chocolate. And, of course, what you eat first? The ears. All right, for milk chocolate. And my first thinking was, Merlot is going to go better with this. But I really wanted the cab. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. It's an obvious pairing. Chocolate, cab. It's kind of hard to go wrong with that. All right, next. Do Rob Zeg. This is going to be a little bit different. Goes with it. Trying to do all these real quick. At this point, you know, I know probably a lot of people are like, dude, really? Can we just get on with this? I need the peanut butter. I need the peanut butter ones. 
doesn't taste too peanut buttery. I guess a little bit in there. Ouch. The fighting tongue is not good. Like barely a peanut butter in that. It works. All right. And they got two more. Three more things. Let's make it quick. So it's probably close to 30 minutes. Dang it. Come on. All right. These eggs. I don't know if there's something inside them. No. Not inside those. I'm try to get these real quick. Well, these are the expensive ones. They're all tiny and stuff. But you know what? Forget worrying about the ham and the turkey. Not turkey. Well, lamb. Give me the candy. Ooh. Well, it's got stuff inside it. Oh. Oh, I think we have a winner there. So these little Lind, Lind candies, the red ones here, perfect. All right, we'll do the Ferrero, Ferrero. I wonder how these are. I think there's something inside these two. I don't remember. They're kind of big too. Oh, please don't tell me it's coconut. No, give me not. No, it's not coconut. Like nougat. Got a little bit more. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Easter candy and wine. Live it, love it, learn it. The wines by themselves, really good. Um, like I said, you could pair them with just about anything, but like this, I see you know, a little, you know, a nice chicken dish with maybe cheese on it, maybe a little spicy type of sauce to it. Um, pretty much any steak or cheeses. And then, um, oh, you drink this by itself, to be honest. Um, good stuff, man. Really good stuff. All right, that's going to do it for today's show as far as all the wine stuff. Um, any housekeeping I want to do? See how much, see how long I've gone? Good Lord, way too long. Um, that's going to do it. Um, other than that, I'll have links below for all the wineries so you can check them out, uh, buy their wine. Um, hit the links above for friending me up. Find me also elsewhere on the intranet, internet, not intranet, on the tubes. And then, um, oh, excuse me, got a little, little bit of blowback there. Anyway, um, and then uh, the donate button, hit that. Throw me a couple ducats. You gotta come to the website for that. Throw some comments too. Did you like this? It was a little long. Yeah, it was a little long. Sorry about that. Did you like it? Um, if you had any of these wines before, um, leave some comments below. Check out the site. Uh, there's other stuff on there. Check out the Psalm School stuff. Some point in time, I'll, I'll do some more. But I'm trying to concentrate on really doing the reviews more than the Psalm School. Um, let's see what else. Future plans. Um, you might have noticed there's a number up up here that keeps changing. Um, that's something that's going to happen some, sometime in the future. That number might change a little bit because I may change the actual date that something happens. But something big is coming up. I, I mean big as in like nobody's ever done it before ever ever with wine okay um seriously nobody's ever done it before a few people know what i'm doing um and if you follow my twitter stream enough you, you you might be catching a hint on some things but um yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be able to pull it off let's put it that way but i plan to i plan to do my best on it um let's see what else uh so yeah, hit the donate button. Did I mention that before? 
anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. That's going to do it. Hey, thanks for sticking around for 40 minutes almost. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.